Since you guys liked the first episode, I'm excited to show to you guys the making of this beautiful wedding gown that I created for my friend. And she's actually my sixth bride or the sixth wedding gown that I created. And I actually write down all of the clients that I was able to serve throughout my career from the first garment until the latest to the latest. Why do I do that? Because I do not want to forget. I do not want to forget these people. I do not want to forget the faithfulness of God. Fun fact, the simplest gowns are actually the hardest to make because when you make a mistake, it's obvious. Write down below if you know this, if you know this feeling. Like people say, simple lang yan, madali lang yan gawin. But honestly, it's actually the hardest thing to make. I was so challenged and I was so excited that it was such an accomplishment when I was able to make this gown for this beautiful bride. So I hope you guys enjoy and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go! I keep forgetting to show the pattern making process but these are our patterns after you cut it and this is our embroidered sequence lace. This is what I chose for our beautiful bride. And it also has a little bit glitter in it. And then the judges. And then we cut every piece. And also the, the pockets. Then we mark it. We trace it. Then we iron. And then this is actually one of the hardest parts because you have to make sure that the placement of the lace um, matches the other pieces. So after you do that, you cut away. Also, I have this jar. As you can see, I put all the scrap fabrics, even the threads, and I collect them. Then I use them as filling for other projects. So after cutting every piece, we have to check if the front bodice and the sides match the lace. And they actually do here, which is good. And now we're checking if we can save this lace and use it for the back part. The next step is we have to base stitch every piece. So that's the red thread you're seeing. Base stitch is actually a temporary stitch that holds the lace and duchess together. And then you remove it after you sew the pieces. After pinning the pieces together, now we sew. I have three pieces to sew in the front and two at the back. After sewing the sides and the shoulders, now we have to iron each seam. So this is what it looks like when we place it on a dress form. And as you can see, the bust part is a little bit bigger. So I need to adjust that. After sewing the bodice, now we will be cutting the skirt. And I used a full circle skirt pattern. And it's very easy. You actually don't need a pattern. You just need the length, the waist and you're good to go. And then we attach the bodice to the skirt and this is the moment of truth if the side seams of the top and the skirt match together.
as you can see they do <laughs> so this is a great achievement Then after checking if the seams are, the side seams are good, now we're going to the back part and place the zipper. We will be hand sewing the zipper first so that it won't move and then we machine, we use the machine to sew it. There you go, that's what it looks like after hand sewing the zipper to the duchess satin. And then we sew it by machine. And this is what it looks like. It's so satisfying when the seams, the back seams match together. So this is for the lining. I use the same fabric, duchess satin, for the top part. I didn't have a footage of how I made the boning part but from the seam I made a one-fourth space and then I stitch it and then I place the boning inside so from the armhole I'm doing a prick stitch a prick stitch is actually um, a stitch that catches only a few threads of the fabric and this is a good stitch to do a reinforcement for the arm side and also the neckline. Now all we have to do is stitch the sides, the lining and the shell fabric together. This is what it looks like when you add the bust pads. Then we have to check every piece if the lining and shell fabric um, is placed together properly by basting it. The pink thread is the basting and you can see that the zipper is based together and also the sides. We do that so that when we hand sew this part, it won't move. Now we hand sew the whole side seam together. You can do this by machine as well, but I did it and it did not look good. So I'm hand sewing every seam. After sewing the side seam, we're now sewing the hook and eye. Then I also sewed my label and then I also sewed the lining with the zipper. Let's go back to the hemline of the skirt by folding it one fourth to have a clean look. We're folding it and then this is what it will look like. You will have a clean look. After you have to fold it around one and three fourths, then hand sew the whole thing as in the whole skirt, just like this. After doing the hemline, we're officially done with the wedding gown. Now we need to do the belt, which is 4 inches. And then I folded it and then sewed half inch. After sewing the belt, you have to turn the whole fabric and then you will have this clean look. I bought this beautiful accent and i'll be sewing hand sewing it together with the belt as much as possible i don't use glue so that i can preserve both the crystal and the belt together because when you use glue it turns yellow and it's hard to remove so now we cut the fabrics for the masks as much as possible we include masks in our creations because we want the wearer to be safe and we want the whole look to look cohesive. We are now set and now we're just gonna have to put the sticker called Specially Made For You by Jillian Micah. I've been using this since I was 12 years old. And this is the garment bag, this is the belt, it looks great, the veil, and the mask that we just made.
And now this is the wedding gown. It looks so beautiful. For the last time, we will just check the inside. We always have to check everything if it's neat, if everything is good. That's the prick stitch um, around the arm side, the neckline, and the boning. There's the side. It's all hand sewn. It looks beautiful. Looks clean. It's all good. No loose threads. And then the zipper looks great. Then our label and hook and eye. Here's what the wedding gown looks like on the bride. <laughs> I actually assisted the bride on her wedding day for her photo shoots um, until she um, walked down the aisle and it it was such a fulfilling project for me. So thank you so much um, Ate Burley for giving me the opportunity to make you this wedding gown. So yeah, if you guys like this video, you will definitely like this one where I unbox my cutest fabric haul and maybe it will help you choose your next fabric for your next project. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all. Bye! <laughs> My mom keeps telling me na ang dami ko daw creases sa, <laughs> sa background ko. So... For my new background, <laughs> I'm steaming it. Para maganda. Don't forget to like and subscribe! <laughs>